Hi again everyone, Dr. Tom McNamara back again for our course in trigonometry. In this video we are going to discuss something called the law of cosines. Now, in the previous couple of videos we had focused on the law of sines and that gave us a way to solve triangles that were not necessarily right triangles. And of course, any situation where we could put in such a triangle, we could use the law of sines to help us out. For example, in some of those applied problems that we looked at. This is another rule that can help us solve triangles that are not necessarily right triangles. It's called the law of cosines. So I've got my triangle up here. Once again, remember our notational convention, angles have the capital letters and Angle capital A opens up onto side lowercase a. So lowercase a denotes the side length that angle A opens up onto. And the law of cosines says this right here. A squared equals B squared plus C squared. Notice that's very similar to the Pythagorean theorem. And then it has this adjusted part here. B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. Right. So, if A were a 90 degree angle, cosine of 90 is zero, so this part goes away. So the law of cosines actually generalizes the Pythagorean theorem. In other words, the Pythagorean theorem is a special case of the law of cosines when the angle we're dealing with is 90 degrees. And you can, you can mix this up here, you just have to adjust the parts. Okay, the law of cosines would apply to any of the sides that we're dealing with here. It, it would tell me c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. All right, so notice that the angle I've got here on the right side is always the angle that opens up onto this side. All right, so if I wanted to write a b squared on the left, I would need cosine b over on the right. Okay, so this is the law of cosines, and we could actually prove this in a similar way to what we did with the law of sines. We would drop down a perpendicular and work with the right triangles that perpendicular created. But let's get right to uh, an example here. Uh, in fact, let's do this. In triangle A, B, C, A equals 48 degrees, B equals 15 inches, and C equals 25 inches. Okay, so I'm just taking an example problem to work for you out of our textbook. Okay, so that example right there. Now let me go over here and get myself a schematic. Always draw a picture, okay? Always draw a picture. So I'm going to include the information that they've given me in orange here. So they told me that A was 48 degrees, B was 15 inches, and C is 25 inches. Now, you might be saying, well, why do we even need the law of cosines? We have the law of sines too, right? Wouldn't that be easier. We just worked, we didn't, didn't have the squares or anything like that. We were just working with the law of sines. Okay, here's the problem. I know angle A, I don't know side A, but I only know one of the angles, so I don't know these two. There's no way for me to figure it out. I know if I take all three of them and add them together, I would get 180 but there's no way to solve that equation with two variables in it. So no matter what I put here, 
I'm going to have two unknowns. I'd have an unknown down here, and I'd have an unknown up here in the angle. So the law of sines will not work. The law of cosines is going to help us out here. So the law of cosines says that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of angle a. So a squared equals 15 squared plus 25 squared minus 2 times 15 times 25 times cosine 48 degrees. All right, let's do some number crunching here. Uh, 15 squared is 225. 25 squared is 625. Uh, let's multiply all this out here. 30 times 25. Hmm, 30 times 25. 25 times 25 is 625, plus 125, so I'm getting 750. All right, uh, I'm going to go check that with a calculator. I'm going to need that for cosine 48 degrees anyway, so let me do some number crunching here. squared 225 plus 25 squared 625 minus 2 times 15 times 25 times 48 cosine equals okay so I am getting 348 uh, 348.152. All right, so um, obviously this is almost never going to work out to be a whole number, only very exceptional cases. So that's what a squared is. So a is going to be the square root of all that. Which is approximately... 18.7. Okay, so we'll put that over here in, uh, in blue. All right, now, um, example that blah, 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 and C equals, I guess I forgot to write the directions here. Find all missing parts. Okay, so we found side A using the law of cosines. Now we need to find the remaining two angles. Let me give myself a little bit of board space here. Okay, now that I know the length of side A, I can use the law of sines to find one of the remaining angles. So we'll use this one, sine of angle A over side A equals sine B over side B. Given the information that we know, this says that sine 48 degrees over the length of side A, which is 18.7, should be equal to sine B. That's an unknown, but side B is known. So sine B equals 15 times sine 48 degrees over 18.7. Okay, back to some number crunching. 15 times 48 sine equals, divide by 18.7 equals. So sine B is equal to point five nine six one approximately so to find the angle I will take the inverse sine and let 
let's see, getting approximately 36.6. All right, so that is angle B, 36.6. And now I can find the third angle, and I don't need to use the law of cosines, I don't need to use the law of sines, nothing fancy like that. I can just use the fact that the angle sum has to come out to 180 degrees. And I know two of the angles already, so that means I can figure out the third. So 48 plus 36.6. And uh, you know what? I'd probably call that 37, going to two significant figures. Okay, so 48 plus 37. So I'm at 133 already. So this would have to be, no, 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 that, that can't be right. 48 plus 37 equals 85. So 95 degrees for that angle C up there to make them uh, work out to be the correct angle sum. Okay, so key things here. The law of sines has some weaknesses. We have to be given an angle and the side length it opens up to in order to use it. In the example that we started with, we had side, angle, side. Now, if you remember from geometry, side, angle, side is one of the triangle congruence theorems. If two triangles have side, angle, side identical, then they have to be the same triangle. So this does determine a triangle. It's just that the law of sines doesn't help us figure out what it is. The law of cosines will help us in cases like this. And also the law of cosines will help us in cases where we know three sides and none of the angles will be able to work out what they are using the law of cosines. Okay, so we'll show you an example of that in the next video.